Hi Pulkit, thank you so much for taking our time for this interview. May we request you to please share your journey, your story in your own words. Sure, thank you Dikshida. So my name is Pulkit. I graduated last year in 2021 from uh, UNC Keenan Flagler Business School. And how I started with my journey was basically during my engineering college. Uh, I graduated in 2015 and while I was studying, I kind of realized this was a little too technical and in-depth for me. I wanted to learn a lot more and I wanted to expand the breadth of knowledge, not just the depth of knowledge in a certain technical field that I have. So mm-hmm. kind of always knew I wanted to do this. Uh, so when I graduated in uh, 2015, I gave the GMAT for the first time, got a decent score of 710. The, that was my first attempt. And then I was like, okay, now let's start working. And when I have some work experience, I'll apply to the business school. So okay. when, uh, so then I had two jobs and mm-hmm. it was a great experience. But when I wasn't learning anything new in my role, I decided, okay, now let's take the plunge and apply. Okay. So I did, um, and I quickly realized that this is a very comprehensive and long process. So that's when I reached out to you guys to, you know, uh, become one of your students and t- get some help with applying. And I took a good amount of time, like one year to apply. I gave a second GMAT attempt also in between. Mm-hmm. And I applied to around 11 schools, got a bunch of good admits. That's how my journey went. Wow. It's been a, quite a long journey, but a successful one, which is amazing. So in your opinion, what are a few factors or actions you took that made all the difference? So a bunch of things, but the most important thing is just taking a lot of time because I started planning well in advance, even my GMAT, um, I gave well in advance and then I took like an year to prepare for the applications Um, because this is a very comprehensive process. There's a lot of things you need to do that you would have never done before. You have to think about things like, okay, what do I want to do in the next five years, 10 years? How is this MBA really going to help me? Mm -hmm. And you, even if you think something like, okay, you know, I just want it because it's good for my career and the stats look nice, the numbers look nice. That's not something uh, business schools want. They want some, you know, someone who has thought through this, how an MBA would really bring value uh, to them. Because if you have figured that out, uh, then you're going to be a better leader and a better alumni as well. Absolutely. Take your time. So, yeah. You have to take a lot of time and think about all these questions uh, about your story. You have to, you know, uh, give the GMAT, of course. You have to talk to alumni and students and ask them about the school. Um, You have to write a lot of different essays. So if you're applying to 10 schools, that's like 30 different essays. Right. Uh, A lot of thinking, a lot of connecting, a lot of research. Uh, goes on a lot of decision making goes into it so take a lot of time okay and i think you'll be good yeah that is true so with the benefit of hindsight what are a few mistakes you believe you committed in the process so uh, the things ended well for me so i don't think i have too many regrets one area of improvements that uh, one area of improvement that i could have done better was I focus too much on tangible things like GMAT scores and, you know, just basically showing what I bring to the table uh, in terms of work experience. But one thing that I didn't understand at that point was that schools really care about things like culture fit. They really care about things like their core values. um, And they really think about, uh, they really value students who are passionate about the school. So uh, any good B school will get a lot of good applications, good GMAT. Course, it's it's that you need to convert your application from good to great right. and this is where you can make the biggest difference by showing genuine yeah. interest in the school and understanding of their culture understanding of the fit and being able to confidently tell okay this is why i fit into this school and okay. why you should take me over another candidate who's just as good so that is one thing i could have done better all right okay so going back to your GMAT prep phase, what were the main resources that you used and you know what tips would you give to the future candidates regarding that? The main tip about resources and GMAT would be to use a lot of official material. All right. Um, 
because uh, the official material, uh, the questions that they share, uh, the practice exams that they have, it's exactly in the same algorithm that they use in the original GMAT. Okay. So as far as learning concepts is concerned, I think it's fine. You can uh, use any resource that you're comfortable with, whether mm -hmm. it's uh, books, whether it's uh, online classes, offline classes, whatever works for you is fine. Okay. Uh, but as far as practice is concerned, mm -hmm. exhaust as much official material as you can. Okay. Um, because uh, and yeah, and also uh, simulate an environment that is exactly like the GMAT. Try, if possible, to uh, solve questions off of your laptop instead mm -hmm. of a book. All right. Um, have, have a timer, and those kinds of things I think really help. Okay. So, what would you like to say about your experience and learnings? from managing the application timelines? Managing the application timeline, as I already said, mm -hmm. uh, have a lot of time yes. uh, because a lot of contingencies can arrive. I'll give you an example. When I was applying, I had I thought I had a good score of 710, mm -hmm. and which is a good score, but okay. then I looked at schools that had an average score of 710 or 720. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I didn't realize that I'm a very overrepresented candidate. I'm uh, okay. Male and Indian engineering background. Mm -hmm. So I needed to differentiate myself a little bit. So I had to give the GMAT again and I took four months to do it. And it, okay. it made a lot of difference in my application. Then. That's amazing. So contingencies can arrive. Mm -hmm. um, you, you might get held up with work. There's a lot of stuff you need to do. You need to get referrals from your bosses. Mm -hmm. Those things might take time. Essays might take time. Yes. So just just be prepared and have a good game plan and mm -hmm. take this seriously. All right. So, okay. A lot of strategy and research goes into <laughs> that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and people haven't thought about these things. Right. Uh, if it's the mm -hmm. first time uh, yes. they do this. Right. Okay. So would you like to describe your interview experience with the preschool? Yeah, the interview experience was actually very friendly and the questions were mostly behavioral. Um, there wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, uh, grinding and uh, tough questions. Um, it's just uh, initially you would think that they would really scrutinize everything you say. But later on, and, and you, everyone was stressed about this, right? It's just right. normal. Yeah. But later on, I realized that um, they are not really trying to see if this guy is and very intelligent or not if they're this guy's uh, being you know is guy, this guy saying the truth on his applications or not for that they have their background checks they have the gmat and all that what they're really trying to see in interviews is whether what kind of conversation do i have with this person is is this person who sounds passionate someone who would contribute to the student body contribute to the class um would, would this person, a lot of assignments in MBR group assignments, a lot of things you do in group and then in your later roles as well. So mm -hmm. would this person be a good fit in those scenarios? So they just want to have a conversation with you mm -hmm. and gauge your interest level, your passion, your level of research, mm -hmm. not really your in, uh, intelligence and accomplishments. Right. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. And all the stress you take will only kind of defeat the purpose and you'll be doing a disservice to yourself. So know that it's just a conversation, casual conversation. You have put your best foot forward already with your scores your essays and everything this is just a conversation take it like that and it should be okay so can you tell us more about your mba experience uh, my mba experience was very interesting because the pandemic hit in between so it was a little bit bittersweet because it was during the pandemic but overall i think i got a lot out of it mm -hmm. and it was exactly what i was hoping for you in mba there are more things to do do than you can there's all different kind of classes and mm -hmm. it really doesn't matter what you take. The interviewers don't really kind of grill your transcript and see, oh, you only took this classes, you took those classes. You mm -hmm. can go there with a learning mindset, really genuinely just take what classes you want. If you want to do exchange programs, if you want to be part of student body, if you don't, if you, um, obviously you need to recruit, you need to do that. That's the only mandatory thing. But apart from that, you can do what you want, get the experience you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, all these activities they have, these exchange programs and uh, all like consulting programs, everything has some kind of value that it would provide you. So just 
go and do what you enjoy and you will love it a lot and you you won't get this opportunity again right uh, so so it's yeah mm-hmm. best to make a, make the most of it so can you tell us more about your post mba journey like how has the entire pre application experience and your mba journey contributed to your growth post mba yeah so all, all these skills that i learned during my application process they are very transferable yeah. um i i was surprised to see it when i applied i had you know a good resume i had put a lot of effort into my application so i had a lot of things going for me in the uh, right right from the get go right. and even now i feel like uh, right now i haven't uh, switched my jobs or roles uh, since my mba but hmm? when i do i know uh, everything that i learned will serve me like how to write star stories mm-hmm. how to focus on uh, the value that i actually delivered focusing on outcomes and results all right um, all the formats and frameworks that you use mm-hmm. these things will i know stay with me for life right and uh, help me any time i want to switch careers or even within a role just if i want to show the impact that i have brought mm-hmm. uh, it, it will all be really helpful so it's been great so far for me that's amazing so according to you what are a few common mistakes that you would advise all the gmat aspirants and the mba applicants to avoid um one big uh, mistake i think gmat aspirants make and this is my opinion but is to do a lot of really difficult questions um especially for quant i think a lot of people think um i will just do really difficult questions and that would elevate me uh, to a different level and improve my score right. but that's not what gmat is about you're not going to develop your brain too much in the four or five months you prepare okay. it's gmat is mostly a time management and decision making exam mm-hmm. it's uh, the core thing that you need to learn is what uh, getting familiar with the questions mm-hmm. and the type of material that comes in Okay. uh getting familiar with the timing mm-hmm. so if you have a one and a half or two minutes for a question getting familiar with that time and understanding when do i spend 30 more seconds to solve this question when do i skip a question in the first 30 seconds when i'm skipping it what's the best strategy to guess um so mm-hmm. these things are what really kind of uh, improve your score aside from that there's nothing too hard about the exam the the questions that come the it's basically high school level math and english mm-hmm. um it's just that you need to do all that stuff in a limited amount of time so right. solving very hard questions won't help you mm-hmm. there will be very few hard questions in the gmat and you might get them wrong anyway in fact mm-hmm. the adaptive nature of the exam ensures that you get a few questions wrong right. so don't worry too much about that and okay. use a lot of official material <laughs> all right Okay so what would be your final message or suggestion to all the viewers watching this video just uh, you know take your time uh, this application process is not something that ends when you uh, are done with your application or admits okay. stays with you for your life absolutely um and enjoy it i think it's very eye opening for yourself as well mm-hmm. um most people don't do that kind of soul searching at least i hadn't done it before applying what do i really want to do why do i really want an mba mm-hmm. what is my plan a plan b why is it my plan a plan b how does it fit with my goals my personality mm-hmm. what is what is what are my core values and how how does it you know uh, match with another school right. um so the, these things are uh, you know it it will really help you to think about this right take your time and enjoy the process it's okay. overwhelming with very comprehensive Yeah. but uh, yeah. in the end if you break down break it down into little uh, little things it it won't be that over well mm-hmm. that's amazing thank you so much pulkit for sharing your inspiring journey with us and i'm sure uh, your tips and suggestions they're going to be super helpful to a lot of students in their journey mm-hmm. to success so uh, yeah. thanks for sharing that with us yeah. yeah thanks for talking with me it was a pleasure connecting with you uh, again <laughs> and i uh, hope you hope you have a great day going forward yeah thank you so much you have a good night take care you too bye bye bye